For as long as video games have existed, there have been people who have altered them to suit their specific design ideas as well as certain playstyles. Some of these alterations have come in the form of making the game itself more of a challenge, exemplified in an episode of that 70s show, Punk Chicks, where the characters of Red Foreman and Michael Kelso try to make the game Pong harder by making the paddle smaller. As video games moved into a more and more software-dependent state, modders also began experimenting with data manipulation and editing to achieve these modded results. One of the first ever recorded PC game mods was for Castle Wolfenstein back in 1983, changing the game's enemies to resemble Smurfs in the newly modded Castle Smurfenstein. Ever since the early days of video game tinkering, the skills and abilities of modders have gotten better and better, being able to alter the game's lighting, create entirely new characters, and in some instances, modders have even been able to turn their modding projects into fully-fledged independent games. The goal of modding has always been to allow for the freedom to express your own ideas, visions, and goals as it relates to the games that we all enjoy, and many have even been able to publish these mods for others to enjoy as well. In such a marketplace of ideas and creative freedoms though, every now and then ideas clash with both modders as well as the platforms they're publishing on. Nexus Mods, a website I am sure everyone in my audience is at least passingly familiar with, is one such platform, hosting perhaps the largest collection of user-created mods on the internet, ranging from the groundbreaking to the... Well, it's incredibly well made, no one can argue otherwise. The majority of mod projects, though, are a labor of love, done for the art of creation and a passion for the games that they are modding. There are, of course, times where love and passion are replaced by indignation and political agenda. At times, this combination can be used to push a more diverse agenda, such as the Black Lives Matter mod for Fallout 4 released by well-known Fallout and Skyrim modder Eleonora. However, there are instances where this passion works in the opposite direction, and instead seeks to limit the choice and diversity that we can experience in these games. As a quick recap, a YouTuber by the name of Heel vs. Babyface recently got a bit of attention after going on an unhinged rant about how, in Starfield, the player is presented with the opportunity to choose their own pronouns. I even made a video about it, and good times were had by all. To be completely fair, and this was something I missed in my initial investigation of the previous video, Babyface was more so specifically triggered because of a quest that included a gender swap clone of a man who used they-them pronouns. Or the clone used they-them pronouns. I, I, I don't know. Either way, it was really fucking cringe. Gender swap clones is such a common trope in media that it's even got its own TV tropes page. It's been used in movies, TV shows, mangas, literature. It's not some new thing that California liberals are just now pushing on simple backwoods British conservatives just trying to play a futuristic space exploration game. I'm getting off topic though. My point is that somewhere out there exists a brave soul who took up the cause and created a mod that removes players' ability to pick their own FUCKING PRONOUNS! automatically defaulting instead to their pronouns based on their sexual orientation. The website they posted this mod on, Nexus Mods, was quick to ban the publication though, citing it as a violation of the website's terms and service around diversity and inclusion. Quote, Hosting this mod was not for us, and is certainly within our rights not to host content on our platform. It is not a political statement or an alignment on one side or the other in a culture war. We stand for diversity and inclusion in our community, and the removal of diversity, while appealing to many, does not promote a positive modding community. Whether or not this is the correct move for the Nexus to make is something that I nor anyone else can say with 100% certainty. It's their website, and they have every right to moderate it as they see fit. So far, it's been working out well for them, seeing as how this isn't the first time that they've made headlines for removing a mod hosted on their pages. Back in 2022, when the remaster of Marvel Spider-Man came out for the PC, there was a mod that caught a lot of people's attention, as it replaced the trans ally flag dotted across the game world with the US flag. A pretty small change, but one that caught a lot of people's attentions as being problematic at best and bigoted at worst. In my opinion, this seemed like a pretty minor change, but I do get why a lot of people found it to be offensive or problematic or, you know, what have you. And I would have to agree with many of the arguments that I've seen against this mod. More so than anything, though, 
The really funny thing is that the, the that Starfield mod specifically, the one that removes pronouns, <laughs> it doesn't even work. Or maybe it works a little too well. The way the pronoun system in Starfield works is that it does give you the choice, but it's not just an RPG function. Instead, it actually changes the pronouns that NPCs will use when speaking or referring to you. The funny thing though is, the game uses they them pronouns to refer to the player character. So by removing this option to choose your own, modders unintentionally made their characters non-binary, which runs completely counter to what the point of the mod actually is. To be fair, there have been many other games, such as the Saint Row series, that have just done this by default, always referring to the character as they them instead of anything specific to avoid recording multiple lines. So it's not a huge change or anything. But I do find it funny that this mod so stealthily blew up in people's faces without many of them even realizing it. Now, of course, this isn't the only thing I wanted to talk about today, because I think the natural question that many people are asking themselves is, well Toshi, if this mod was banned on the Nexus, surely it must exist somewhere else or people wouldn't still be talking about it. What good was really done by banning it? And you're right, this mod does exist on another website, along with numerous other mods that by comparison, are way, way worse. While I do believe that people should be able to modify their games however they want, I do not endorse the messaging of any of the mods that I will be talking about from this point onward. I will also not be mentioning the name of the website that these mods are hosted on for the very same reason. Out there in the expansive sea that is the internet exists a mod page where you can get all kinds of degenerate mods. Mods that would make the devil blush. The sort of creations that you only experience by yourself at 2am in the basement with the door locked. Because to even be seen associating with these mods in passing would get you shunned from polite society. Hunted down, tried as a war criminal, and banished to the same island that they left Napoleon on. It's called Doom World, and it's right next to the page that we're actually going to be talking about. Now obviously, I'm just kidding, Doom World is a fine place, and Doom modders have created some truly spectacular creations, but I can't say that I'm all too surprised to see more than a few Doom mods on this page. Some pretty infamous ones too, actually, like Moon Man and Pol Wad. I won't be going into excessive details about these mods, but I will say that they are just horrendously racist works that seem to be more unserious shock value mods than anything pushing any sort of hardcore agenda. A lot of the research I did on these mods for this video I actually got from G-Man Live on YouTube, so if you want to know more about those specific mods, go check out his videos. While a lot of these mods are just flat out racist, transphobic, homophobic, etc, etc, some of them just they don't really make a whole lot of sense in the context of the games that they mod. Like take this one for the Miles Morales Spider-Man game. It changes a lot of the artwork that's seen across the game to more inspiring images, like changing a Unity image to a completely whitewashed version and removing this really beautifully done artwork for what I can only assume is art depicting a slave plantation? So like I'm trying to wrap my head around that. like. Playing as a black character is fine, but you just don't want to see black artwork in the game? It's a real weird line to draw, but okay. To the surprise of nobody at all, the pronouns mod for Starfield wasn't the only one I was able to find, and you can rest assured that these mods are just as cringe and degenerate as the rest of the mods on this page. However, there was one that stood out specifically to me in this category, and that's the remodel mod for the romanceable companion, Andresia. Looking at images of the two character models side by side, it's obvious straight off the bat what a massive downgrade it is from the original. Instead of being more realistic and grounded as compared to the rest of the game, she looks like one of those anime characters who will swear up and down that she's really a 6,000 year old demon from another dimension, but we, and most importantly the FBI agent checking our internet history, know better. That was actually a common theme I saw across a lot of these mods. Poor creative design and just overall really boring and bland artistic choices. Going back to that Spider-Man mod real quick, they replaced this beautifully done artwork with what I can only assume is a Google search image of a cartoon fish? One of the weirder things about this page though is that some of these mods don't really seem all that bad. Like. 
There's an Elden Ring mod that replaces the AB body type phrasing in the character creation page to male or female choices. S strangely enough, being very PC about it in referring to the choice as between sexes rather than genders. Then there's also other mods like this Minecraft one that... I, I don't know, you can have a beard if you play as Steve? A mod that allows for lighter skin tones in Hogwarts Legacy, and a Skyrim mod that makes female characters slightly shorter than male characters. It's a very strange grab bag of seemingly innocent mods mixed in with a, just a catalog of degenerate creations. Overall though, this page is just a bunch of mods made by boring straight white guys catering to a bunch of other boring straight white guys with very specific and very obvious political and social ideals. And as I said, I don't endorse any of it. If this is what they want to do with their content though, that's their choice to do so. Just as it is for the Nexus mods to do the same. More so than anything else, I just wanted to talk about what happened with this banned Starfield mod and talk a little bit about this other website because I just find the whole thing completely ridiculous. Like, yeah, these people have every right to mod their own gaming experiences and offer it to others. But at the same time, when they release something like this into a public sphere, they shouldn't at all be surprised when people mock or ridicule them. Welcome to the internet. These, however, are just my thoughts. What do you all think? Do you think that Nexus was right in their decision? And what are your thoughts on mods like the ones we talked about today? I always love to hear other people's thoughts, but because of the nature of the content we talked about, let's remember to keep things civil and to treat others with respect, even if we disagree. Until next time, though, I thank you all so much for watching, like and subscribe and stuff, and until next time, I'll see you all out there in the wasteland.